Hello, my name is Ama Bonsu. I'm the host of a fantastic online series called Amazing Series. My full-time job is a banker in Toronto, Canada, but this year I've taken time out to go after my passion and pursue it with vigor. For the past couple of months, I've been traveling around different parts of Africa, Liberia, South Africa, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, and I've been capturing amazing footage about all that is beautiful about our continent, Africa. When you go on Amazing Series, you're going to see interviews with people like Hugh Masekela. You're going to hear the Rwandese talk about life after genocide. You're going to hear Liberians talk about post-war Liberia and rebuilding their country. Follow, follow, on your baby, similar. Or on your love, judging your love. And a man, I come in doing that. See who the go, judging your damn so, 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 man, Most of all, what I've learned is in life you have to go for what you want and follow it with vigor. So join us on Amazing Series, but most importantly, I want you to be bold about everything that you want in life. Go for it, let nothing hold you back. Don't forget, be bold. Welcome back to Be Bold. Up next, we have BB with a purpose. And in studio, we have Ama Bonsu, who is the host of Amazing Series. Thank you for joining us today. Crystal, thank you for having me. Of course. Now, you are amazing. And I just can't even <laughs> wait to start telling people what you do. Um, so, first of all, describe, we just saw your profile yes. where you described, you showed us what you do and told us, can you just go more into detail because I know you told me more than what we saw in the profile. Well, I am a huge advocate of people following their passion and going for their dreams. So I decided to do exactly that for the year 2011 and I have an online series called Amazing Series and I decided to travel around different parts of Africa to tell a positive story, to break the negative stereotypes that are out there about Africa. So I went to Liberia, uh, Liberia, South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, Uganda, Rwanda, and I wanted to touch on all these countries that have been in the news for political unrest, civil war, and I wanted to let people know that there's a second chapter to these stories. So I want people to know that if you hear of Rwanda, I don't just want you to think about genocide. I want you to know that the Rwandis are putting their country together. They're united as a, as a country. They're working hard to make sure that there's a different story to hear about Rwanda. When you look at my videos on Liberia, for instance, I know that when we say Liberia, people automatically think civil war. Mm -hmm. But I want people to know that Liberia is rebuilding, their business is open, their are thriving so I really do want to step away and let Africa narrate its own story because for many years now our story has been hijacked by the Western media and they tell their own side so I think it's high time Africans started telling their own stories and showing another side of Africa that which is good that which is positive and that which is of course beautiful yeah wow this is amazing now what what inspires this global culture of yours that you have this idea of like going around all the different countries what inspires that i i think it's just my passion for africa because i i'm born in ghana raised in ghana i live in canada at the moment and i know that there's so much more about our continent than i see on the news and i want us to tell our own stories so when i'm in south africa for instance i sit with a group of young women for them to tell us what it is to be 
a born free they call them the born freeze those who are born and they, they didn't go through their apartheid era like their their parents did so i wanted to i wanted them to tell their own story on what is south africa how do the young people in south africa what do they think like how how are they going about business how they're going about the education their relationships what is the young south africans future like and when you watch the videos once again on amazing series you're going to hear the stories of young enterprising dynamic south africans who are moving their country to a new direction yeah. so i really do have a passion for my continent and to be honest with you crystal when i started this i thought oh you know i'm african i know africa but i'm surprised even through some of the interviews that i did about ghana that there was so much more for me to uncover, so much more for me to find out about perhaps the Akwesi Dai festival that mm -hmm. I, I went to cover. Um, I spoke to brilliant uh, a young man, a brilliant young man called Kelly Jack uh, Kajapo of uh, Data Bank, who told us how he started as a young business person with his partner trying to put together the bank called now known as you know mm -hmm. data bank it's a huge corporate entity now so speaking to these key people to hear their perspective of africa and where they wanted to go i learned more about africa than i ever thought i knew what is the most interesting story that you've done you've gone to so right now i've heard you obviously you're in ghana yes. now you've done south africa you've done so many kind of rwanda yes, you mentioned yes. so what is the most interesting story that you've done or let's say awkward or weird something that stood out I, perhaps i would say the most interesting one was rwanda because when my family when i told my family i was going to rwanda everybody panicked they said don't go to rwanda yeah. they kill each other please <laughs> don't go right and it, it was interesting because we as africans we complain of stereotypes but we're quick to also you know put another country in a, in a box because of something that happened in their past so i went to rwanda not knowing how to feel about it and from the moment i entered that country crystal i would tell you i was blown away the order, the beauty, but most of all, the, the sense that the people have that we have to build our country ourselves. The way they're stepping away from tribalism, the way they honor their past, knowing that they've gone through a gruesome genocide, but I would tell you they were the most dedicated, committed group of people in putting their country back together. And I say all Ghanaians, all other Africans need to visit Rwanda, number one, to see what um, genocide can do, what civil war, what unrest can do to a country. But most importantly, we have a huge lesson to learn from Rwanda, which is we need to come together. And I know Ghanaians are doing, we're doing a very good job about, we're doing a very good job with that, but we need to come together and learn some of the things, not repeat their mistakes, but learn from them and see that there's something, there's something to be said for the second part of Africa. Yeah. You know what, Alma Bones, I think you've been describing it a lot, but let's just take a look at one of the best um, videos that you have, and then we'll get back to this interview. Okay. In the last few years, there's been a huge exodus of Ghanaians and Africans in general who are returning home, some for altruistic reasons to get back, but others because the financial markets back, uh, back in the States and in North America has collapsed. Now coming home, a lot of the people I speak to speak of the fact that when you come home people say, oh you are too low, you are trying to do things and there is some form of resistance. Did you feel that resistance then in the 90s? <laughs> Ours was... Especially when you're trying to give advice and they say yeah. these, these two, what do you know? Why? <laughs> what do you know was more aligned to the youthfulness. You know, circa 20 years ago, uh, I mean, I was really almost uh, looking like a teenager, probably, and so, so, yeah. so it was just getting the credibility and the sort of the maturity profile, getting beyond because. I am your host, Ama, and today I am just thrilled. If you look by my side, you know why, because I'm joined by Africa and the world's own music legend. Hugh Masakela. Uncle Hugh, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Uncle Hugh, I saw your fantastic play yesterday, uh, Migration. Songs of Migration. Songs of Migration. And you touched my heart and moved my spirit. What inspired you to put this together? Wow. 
Wow, that was really amazing. Now tell me, what is the purpose of doing this? I mean, you see everything beautiful. You know, what is the purpose of this? The purpose of this, it's a two-tiered purpose, I would say. One, it's a bit selfish. It's my own passion, my own dream. I am a trained banker. I am an economist, right? Mm -hmm. But I decided to take time away from my technical job, as I like to call it, and explore my passion, which is connecting with people. So I wanted to do that. But in fulfilling my own desires, I also wanted to... Uh, just let people know about where I'm from, which is Ghana and which is, you know, the bigger part, which is Africa. And I wanted people to know that my continent that I'm so proud of has a lot to teach the rest of the world. And I don't want people to keep thinking of Africa as a place of unrest and, you know, the barbarians who live there, they're always fighting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help when you hear of things like, you yeah. know, Cote d'Ivoire and the rest. But I really want people to know that there's a different side of Africa. And when they're knowing that, I wanted to come from Africans, <laughs> right? I want, yes, I want us yes. to own our story and tell tell our story with pride and dignity because we have so much of that yeah. in our continent so that's what drives me now you're a you mentioned before you're a banker yes as well so yes. how is that your full-time job and then this is a sort of a side thing that you do how do you get off from work to go and travel across the world to you know show all these amazing series that you have i i was able to work this out with um my employers I, I have a leave of absence because I adopted my cousin so with the Canadian system you're able to take you know some time off and I've I've scheduled it so that I was able to have her adjust and then take some two three months off to dive full throttle into what I really love wow. that's how come I was able to do it wow. but it's not easy <laughs> I can imagine. So on that is not easy. Tell me, what would you say to people that are looking to dive into things that, like this that you're trying to do as well? I would say I, I didn't get any sponsors. If you can get sponsors on board, that's good because it's a huge financial undertaking. You have to be careful. I know I'm going to these so you places. you all of this yourself? Self-financed completely um, because I believe that you have to put your you know mouth where your desires are mm -hmm. but I also had a very 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 good travel agent find a good travel agent who can work with you my travel agent is African Express uh, travel tours limited mm -hmm. and they had a passion for me to always make sure are you safe are you secure do you need anything do we need to call home so I was very fortunate in, in having a base that I could always call and say can you get this done for me so you I know it, it sounds adventurous but I also want people to be sensible I don't want people jumping on the next uh, plane to say I'm going to explore my passion yeah. you have to be sensible you have to be safe you have to be secure I always made sure if I could I could stay with a family friend or someone that I knew mm -hmm. so I took all the necessary precautions to make sure that I don't have a culture shock and I'm not putting myself in any undue yeah, yeah. danger. Well, thank you very much, Amar Bonsu, for joining us here today from Amazing Series, the host of Amazing Series. Well, let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. Mm -hmm.